Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Carrie Justick. People around the world got to know Rosie Huntington Whiteley in campaigns and on catwalks for some of the biggest fashion brands, from Victoria's Secret to Valentino. But while while winning accolades like Model of the Year, Huntington Whiteley has also been recognized as a super successful businesswoman, most recently launching her beauty-centric brand, Rose Inc., just last year. Already, the digital magazine has created its own unique beauty community. Let's check out a clip. So, I yes. wanted to recreate a look that I, like, my jaw dropped when I saw this on you, and this was a few months ago, I think at the, you know, here it says, Woman in Film. Mm -hmm nominees party and I think our mutual probably one of our favorite makeup artists Hung Bango did this yes. look on you I thought it would be really fun to like recreate this like sort of sparkly kind of copper tone on the eye and then this like peachy kind of cheek this is probably as far and Hung will tell you this this is as far as I'll go like with the smoky eye because if you put like a massively dark or pigmented smoky eye on me like yeah. I, it just doesn't yeah, like where's me? You know, this is the Van Gogh stroke. Um, okay, so I've done a little bit of um, base already yeah. to save time. As have I. I'm just trying to go straight in and do the eye. So I'm going to start with this hourglass and blaze. I'm going to use this brush by Rowan. I'm going to sort of like just play around with, with this glossy. Yeah, and as I was telling you earlier, I use my fingers quite a bit to apply makeup. Like there's something about the like skin on skin I know. sort of thing that like, and again, like honestly, even brushes sometimes can intimidate me slightly. Like I'm sort of watching what you're doing, sort of fascinated. This is an amazing brush. So this is um, Rowan, a brand that just launched oh, yeah, by right. Nikki De Rose. Right. So it's great for all eyeshadows, but particularly ones that have like a sort of metallic kind of creamy. Yeah. I also feel like when I do, you know, a wash of something, I kind of like to like drag it out a bit, you oh, know, because it yeah. kind of like, I mean, it elongates it. The tip. Please help me in welcoming Rosie Huntington Whiteley. Good morning. Hello, hello. How are you? I love watching that video. Thank you. I'm such a YouTube person and I love like the beauty community on there. Yeah. And so to see people like you and Kate Bosworth yeah. just playing around with makeup, it's mm -hmm. really, really awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so of course we're going to talk about Rose Inc. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell me a little bit about the origin story of this brand? So for me, it kind of really started because I've spent, you know, I'm th I just turned 32 and I started modeling when I was 16. And um, I grew up kind of always attracted to fashion and beauty. That was something I always loved to do. And when I started modeling, um, I really truly felt like I was in an environment that I'd always kind of dreamt of being in, in this fashion community, in this world. And over the years, I've had, you know, countless hours in the hair and makeup chair, and it's probably where I would consider, you know, my favorite memories of my career have been made. It's an incredibly creative time. Um, it's always fun, and I learn something every day. And um, over the years, I've just found that a lot of people were asking me for beauty advice, uh, whether it be my mum, whether it was a girlfriend, whether it was my uh, person, in, you know, a follower or a person, um, you know, in my audience. And so I would start to see when I was sharing things on social media, so, you know, whether it was a beauty tip or a product recommendation, I would see the response. It was getting the positive response. And so for quite a few years, I th was thinking about bit, what could I build that kind of could encompass all of these things, put together all my relationships and the connections that I've built over the years, highlight these incredible artists that I've worked with, and just talk about something that I'm passionate about. And so I sort of was thinking about a digital platform for quite some time. And then when I uh, became pregnant, I found that I had this sort of, I basically had a bit of time to do, to build something. I, you know, as a model, you spend, you know, basically your whole life on an airplane. And so for 15, 16 years, I was basically traveling every couple of weeks and then, yeah, got pregnant. I was like, okay, I can do this now. I've got time to do it. So for a year, I sort of spent time building the, you know, the, the site and putting together a small team. And the site launched a little less than a year ago. So here we are today. 
That's yeah. so awesome. Um, and I know you're saying like spending time in the mm -hmm. makeup chair, that was a highlight of your career. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people wonder about what happens yeah. um, and what type of relationship you create with mm -hmm. an artist that you yeah. spend so much time time with. And I know like in this video, you reference Hung Van Gogh, who's one of your makeup artists. Mm -hmm. um, you, you worked on launching this with another makeup artist, Katie Jane Hughes. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about the relationship that you develop with yeah. these artists when you're spending so much time in their chairs? I mean, I would consider some of my best friends my, you know, that I, I get to work with them. They're also, you know, you, you build these incredible relationships, you travel the world. It's a very intimate time, you know, you're, normally you're getting to hair and makeup at six in the morning and you don't look like this. <laughs> really? <laughs> You know, you just, you, it's its an intimate time and it's a fun time. It's creative. I mean, it's not for everyone. Not everybody enjoys that process. Uh, but for me, I always have. And um, I think, you know, starting modeling so young and kind of being, you know, out on your own in that industry, the, the hair and makeup teams were where you could find a little bit of comfort and solace and um, and and connection with people and so yeah it's and and again like I said it's just something I've always really loved I've always loved anything beauty related and so it was really where I found like I was very interested in what they were doing and and uh, you know everything that they were teaching me was was you know storing up in my brain so yeah. I love that because I'm very much one of those people like I'll sit down and chat with like any makeup yeah. artist, hairstylist because yeah. I want to know like what you're using, what it does. Um, and I can imagine that not everybody is like that. Um, and so I know through social media, like you said, you saw that a lot of your mm. fans were asking you these questions. Was there a moment that you remember realizing that maybe you had an authoritative voice when it came to beauty because like you said a lot of the time you were in the chair so yeah. when did you realize oh I actually have gotten all this knowledge that yeah. I could then pass on to people I think for me it, it it was coming from sharing this you know whether it was a product recommendation or a makeup tip on social media but also every time I'd sit down with journalists they were asking me for beauty advice health tips well-being um, you know, what I was eating, what I'm wearing. And I sort of felt like, okay, well, perhaps, you know, people want to know this. Why, why not build something where I can really connect with people and share it f straight from me rather than there being a middle person in between this? And, and so that was, it was just sort of a built over time. And, you know, I still don't think I have particularly like any authority any more than anyone else does. But I think what I have is quite a unique position. You know, there's plenty of incredible makeup artists who are much more experienced than I am. But I have a unique point of view having had the opportunity to work with hundreds, maybe even thousands of different makeup artists over the years. I mean, I was trying to think yesterday, like how many times I must have had my hair and makeup done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, over the 16 years I've been working and it's, you know, it, it must be thousands. So it's just a unique, a unique position to be in. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm the, the ultimate kind of hair and makeup assistant almost. I've, I've learned a lot from all of these artists. Yeah. I love that. Um, and you also, you reference your audience a lot, but the mm -hmm. one thing that I think is really cool about um, Rose Inc. in particular is you've really created a community. Yeah. Um, so how did you decide that that's something that you wanted to do and how did you kind of make that happen? Yeah, it's a working process, right? I mean, I'm, it's great that you think that we've built a community. I know that's the, that's the thing that, that my team and I are talking about all the time. How do we do this? How do we build authentic relationship with our community? Um, for me, it starts with listening to my community and it starts with listening to my audience. What do they, what do they want to hear from me? What do they want to see from me? Um, you know, and that's the great thing about social media is that you can literally have this two-way dialogue in the comment section and you can hear what people what people want they want skincare advice they want to hear you know how to do a certain you know, they want a certain tutorial and we go away and we kind of produce that and so it starts with that and then i think it's about from me i think it's about authenticity um and it's about you know connecting with people on a human level um and uh, I think a little bit of humor goes a long way as well. But I'm learning. It's a, it's a definitely, you know, I've got a YouTube channel now, which I don't think I ever thought I would have. 
Um, and I was very nervous about starting it. I'm, I would consider myself a relatively private person in a, in a lot of ways, certainly with my personal life. And so I was a little bit reserved to sort of share things um, in, in that way. But I'm, I'm starting to really, really enjoy it. And seeing the positive feedback is encouraging me to do more. And so, yeah. But yeah, I think for me, talking about beauty has always felt authentic and something I felt comfortable mm -hmm. talking about and sharing advice on. So when it comes to your YouTube channel in particular, mm -hmm. and like you said, kind of letting people in, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that's a really crazy experience for somebody. Like people, when you were a model, people know you for like the fashion that you're wearing and things like that. And obviously you did interviews and you spoke, but you never really let people in in this way. Um, beauty is the way that you're doing it, but I'm sure you've also talked about a ton of other things and kind of opened up other conversations. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything in particular that kind of like you realized you shared through this process that you weren't necessarily thinking of? Or I know like even with parenting, is yeah. that something that's come up that you weren't necessarily expecting? Yeah, I think for me, like, you know, being a new mom, my son's about to turn two. And, you know, when I when I first got pregnant, I was really, really private about it and kind of very nervous to share. And I think it was just more so because you're going through everything kind of for the first time yourself and you don't know how everything's going to pan out. And slowly I felt more and more comfortable talking about it. And, you know, for anyone that is a new mom, that they will understand the sort of shift in your identity that happens after you've had your baby and, and, how, that, and how that changes you. And, and so now it's something I'm really happy and excited to talk about. I love talking about <laughs> <laughs> about my son and and, and, and being a mum and uh, it's it's a great for me I found when I got pregnant and having my son is just a really really bonding uh experience with other parents and you'll find yourself having conversations with people that you would never would otherwise and I think at the soul of everything everybody's desires as a parent is to give the very best to their children and um, I think that's incredibly connecting and so, obviously, like you said, your son is about to turn two, yeah. and the brand is about to turn one. One, yeah. Um, how are you balancing all of that? <laughs> because I know while you were pregnant, you were like, yeah, I had some downtime. Yeah. Now I can imagine it's quite the opposite. Yeah, it was like a bright idea to, la <laughs> to launch a business or to think I was going to launch a business. Um, you know, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, and, and now... You know, the, the life I have is sort of, a, as I, you know, I feel like I'm in startup life a little bit. And it's so different. As a model, it's incredibly transactional. You know, the phone, the phone rings, your agent tells you you've got a job, you say yes, you turn up, you do the job, you get paid and you, and you leave. And it's, you know, it's just kind of like a hustle in that way to kind of keep the jobs coming in. Mm -hmm. But when you start a business... It's completely different. It's completely different, as as people will know. And um, you know, there's, I put a lot. There's a lot more um, time and energy that goes into something. And I think that in startup life, you just don't quite know what you're doing and what you're building. And you know, you're moving and flexing with how things are. You know, how things are growing. Um, and trying to juggle it all is, you know, I, that's what I'm asking everybody. <laughs> that's a question I ask. Like, how do you do it? I, I, I don't know if there is such thing as a, as balance. I think that, you know, for me, I think of, I believe in like striving for balance, but I'm not sure if I, if there's ever going to be such a thing. I don't think you can do everything at once, a hundred percent. But I know, like, when I'm with my son, I give him a hundred percent, and when I'm with my family, I'm giving them a hundred percent, and when I'm at work, I'm going to give it a hundred percent. But it's uh, it's it's really hard. It's hard. It's very it's very hard. It's something, you know. I think uh, that that new mums and working mums and all mums kind of st the, st the struggle with that. Yeah, for sure. And like you said, now you have a community that you can kind of yeah. talk about it with. Yeah. Um, also, I have to say, Rose Inc. is obviously like a digital magazine mm -hmm. platform. How does a model turned entrepreneur turn then into an editor? Um. Well, I don't know if I would call myself so much of, of, of an editor. I think, you know, I, I have a beauty editor that works on my team. Mm -hmm. Her and I work really, really closely together. Um, you know, I, I 
consider myself more of a founder of the site and I have an you know amazing team that work with me um, but I'm very much a believer in you know I can't do everything and I'm not an expert in every field I have this background and I have this different point of view with the career I've had mm -hmm. and my strengths lie in that area and that's certainly you know I bring that part to the to the business but I'm very much about letting people in their fields and their areas do do that, like do what they do best. And I'm really interested in working alongside them and learning from them. And so that is, that's really important to me. Yeah, surrounding myself with like great team members that can flourish and enjoy their jobs and do what, do what they want to do. Yeah, I feel like that's so vital to yeah. the growth of something like yeah. this for sure. Um, in terms of whether it's the business side of things or even within the beauty community, what's like the biggest thing you've learned? The biggest thing I've learned, oh, that's a great question. I think just, I'm just learning every every day. I'm learning, you know, YouTube is like a whole world that I'm it learning is, about. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm learning what people want, what people um, want to see. And I think that's really, really, really interesting and moving with that. And I think I've learned like, you know, what a, 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 like an incredible amount of work that goes into these businesses. I think sometimes people sort of think, oh, it's so easy to have a business. It's so easy to be an entrepreneur or a founder. And, you know, it's, it's not. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work and commitment um, and passion. And, um, you know, I just... I, there's not a day that goes by where I don't, you know, put my head on my pillow and it's not the last thing I'm thinking about at night. Yeah. I feel like everybody's great ideas pop up in the middle of the night. Yeah. Are you one of those people? Yeah. I'm a, I have like a lot of great ideas that when I'm flying. Okay. I don't know. I'm either crying on the plane. Like, does everyone cry on the plane when they like watch movies? Of, oh, uh, yeah. Like, movies, what is yeah. that? And then, <laughs> like always, like in your seat sobbing. But yeah, on the plane, I always take a notebook because I find like you just really have that clear time to like think. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of inspiring thoughts on the plane and definitely last thing at night. Um, and then in terms of your audience and your community, mm -hmm. um, we've talked a little bit about the way that you interact with them, but how have your interactions with them changed? Like some of maybe your biggest fans mm -hmm. from when you were a model, mm -hmm. how are they now interacting with you through this? And is it any different? I don't know if it's different so much. I mean, I feel, <laughs> I feel so grateful because I have a probably a small but very um, committed like fan base who've probably been with me for many, many years. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just really committed to spreading the word on anything I'm doing. And, uh, and I feel very grateful to them for that. And I think that they're just excited for this new chapter in my life and this new journey that I'm uh, that I'm on. And, you know, yeah. I love that. Um, and then, of course, since we're talking beauty, I know um, you've said that you haven't really changed your routine much since becoming a mom, mm -hmm. that you've always had a pretty quick routine. Well, I mean, I would say it's the thing that's changed since being a mom is just have less time. Yeah. You know, it's like just just much less time <laughs> to get ready. What are so. some of your like go to products or routines that maybe you've picked up after becoming a mom? I think skincare is always like where it starts for me. And, um, you know, so taking care of, is of skin first and finding the products that work for you. And, you know, that's ever changing and evolving as, mm -hmm. you know, as everybody will know. So, yeah. I love that brands, including yours, are now also focusing on skincare because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the time the beauty community in the past was all makeup yeah. um, and people were neglecting their skin. And now with somebody like you, even like you were saying, you've had makeup done a th over a thousand times. And if you didn't take care of your skin, like. I think skincare is really like when I, what I'm learning is that people, you know, there's obviously always going to be interest in, in makeup and color, but it's skincare that people really want to be educated on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and in particular, clean. There's a big clean movement that's happening with beauty and skincare. And so that's something I'm excited to, you know, I'm lucky enough to be uh, working with Bare Minerals, which is a clean skincare brand, um, skincare and makeup brand, and just learning so much about the formulations and why it matters to, to use clean products. And so uh, that's a big sort of movement that's happening in the industry right now. And consumers are smart, you know. No longer do people just go in 
in and buy products. People are turning them over. They're looking at the ingredients. They want to know how things were made. And, you know, that's the age that we're living in where people, you know, consumers are smart. They, you know. In um, when you were the one sitting in the makeup chair for the majority, did you ask about products that were being yeah. used on your face? Were you always really conscious? I ask of it? about everything <laughs> <laughs> um, to the point probably where I irritate my makeup. <laughs> uh, like the chit chat is nice. But yeah, <laughs> no, I ask about everything. I've just that's that's how I've learned everything I know. There's a lot of a lot of people I think come and sit in the hair and makeup chair and they don't. You know, it's just that's not that's just not what interests them but for me I've like always been fascinated by it it's it's an artistry you know it really really is and so that's I, I'm asking questions all the time about it yeah um and obviously we saw the clip from you and Kate Bosworth yeah. doing your makeup and you just talked about a partnership that you work on um has there been any collaboration since you started Rose Inc mm -hmm. that was your favorite or could you reflect on some of the yeah really we just ones? did something really cool with um amazon amazon launched a, a, a skincare brand uh just recently and we did a really great piece of content with them um we also partnered with another one of my favorite makeup brands hourglass early on in the year and i love yeah that. everybody loves hourglass so you know that's just that's what's really exciting and and a great way for the website to be monetizable and yeah that's awesome. Um, and then I have to ask, the Met Gala is coming up yes. on Monday. Are you excited? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I am now because yesterday my, uh, my lovely stylist, Emma Jade Morrison, showed me a picture of my dress and our, our mouths were on the floor. So I'm excited. It's always a little daunting, the Met Ball, because there's a lot of pressure around mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's the really the one red carpet event of the year where everybody goes for it, the designers. Uh, really, really dedicated. It's um, it's probably a little bit competitive, and and uh, you know, it's it brings people together from all areas of the industry. You know, you see entertainment at all all levels of entertainment, and so, and I've been going to the Met Ball now probably for 12, 11 years, maybe Sounds maybe ten kind of years, exhausting. and uh, I've seen how it's changed over the years and has yeah. become a bigger and bigger and bigger deal. Um, and so it's a little nerve wracking, mm -hmm. but I'm excited because, um, you know, my dress is, is quite spectacular. So I'm so excited. Um, what's the process like getting ready for it? Whether it's, I mean, obviously mm -hmm. the day of, but also the Met always has a crazy theme. Mm -hmm. Um, and is that something that you really take into consideration when you're planning out yeah. your look? That would all depend on what the theme is and certainly the designer you're going with. Mm -hmm. Um, this year the theme is camp. And so, uh, the designer and I, you know, spoke about kind of how we could, incorporate that theme into the dress which we have certainly done and so I'm excited I think there's going to be a lot of fun fabulous outfits this year um, and I think it's a great theme and I can't wait to see the exhibition. And then for someone like you obviously it's all about the dress and the styling here but also I'm sure you've thought a lot about the makeup or is that something that yeah. you just kind of like <clears throat> it's spur of the moment yeah. with your outfit or it goes into like the whole planning? It really depends. Luckily, I've been with the artist that I'm working with on Monday for the last couple of days. And so we looked at the dress yesterday and he's, his clogs were turning. It, but it's it really depends on the artist. So we have a few ideas, but it, it, it really depends. It can happen right there in the moment or it's something that they might be thinking about for a, for a few days beforehand. That's amazing. I'm very, very excited to see. Oh, thank um, you. We're going to head over to some audience questions. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Hi. Hey, Rosie. Hello. Hi. You look so beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank so you. I, I watched your video had with uh, Vogue about like the, your beauty routines mm -hmm. and the 73 questions. And I truly agree on your uh, beauty philosophy that uh, beauty is from inside out. But I have one question. Um, can you give us like one beauty trick that you think is the most useful? Well, it probably would start with skincare because I think that that's the canvas of everything when it comes to makeup. And so you, I probably won't hear this. I will hear this piece of advice every single day and that is to wear SPF mm -hmm. sun cream. So look after your skin first, yeah. Yeah, from the video you said you had uh, the most thing is SPF and lipstick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm definitely hopping on the 
SPF yeah. bandwagon. I was not great in the past. Yeah, me and, either. Yeah, right. I feel like yeah. that's everybody's journey, and then they're like, "Oh, this is serious." Yeah, I, I feel like the SPF. children of my my son's probably going to have perfect skin because yeah. everyone now knows to wear SPF. Exactly. And we have another one. Hi. If you could Hi. only have one makeup item to use forever, what would you use? Uh, <laughs> probably a good lipstick. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I feel like for you, you've said lips and lashes in the past. Yeah, yeah lashes are yeah. huge, too. I'm yeah. always like, I could never go without mascara. Yeah, your makeup looks great today. Oh, thank you. I did not do it. But you didn't? No. I like the blue liner. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. Well, it was so great having you thank on. You thank much. you so much. Everybody go check out Rose Inc. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.